Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansa. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 23rd of March. India achieves 400 billion goods export target. PM Modi says it is key self-reliant India milestone. Allies no more with PM Imran Khan's party claims Pakistan's opposition alliance chief. And Taliban shut down schools for Afghan girls hours after reopening. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday congratulated people, especially farmers, micro, small and medium-sized enterprises and exporters as the country achieved its target of reaching 400 billion US dollars from exports in the current fiscal, nine days ahead of schedule. Taking to Twitter, PM Modi described the landmark as a key milestone in the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, which translates to self-reliant India vision. The exports in the financial year 2020-21 were 292 billion US dollars, while the exports in 2021-22 are 400 billion US dollars with a 37% rise. Earlier in February, India's Commerce and Industrial Minister Piyush Goyal had said for 10 months in a row continuously from April 2021 to January 2022, India had posted over 30 billion US dollars of exports. We have already crossed 334 billion US dollars exports, which is more than the highest ever that India had done earlier in a full 12 month period. Fuel prices in India were raised for a second consecutive day on Wednesday by 80 paise per litre, a day after these were hiked for the first time since November last year. Lawmakers of Opposition Congress Party raised slogans against the price hike in petrol, diesel and LPG gas outside the Parliament House complex, stepping up its attack on the government over the move. Prices of petrol and diesel were hiked again by 80 paise a litre for a second straight day across India on Wednesday. As oil marketing companies started to pass on the sharp increase in international crude oil prices to consumers. In capital New Delhi, petrol will now cost Rs 97.01 per litre, as against 96.21 earlier, while diesel sees a jump to Rs 88.27 a litre from Rs 86.67. India's opposition Congress party on Wednesday stepped up its attack on the ruling BJP Bharati Janata Party government over rising prices of cooking gas and petroleum products. Congress lawmakers staged a protest outside the Parliament House complex against the price hike in petrol, diesel and LPG gas. Thus, Hazar crore rupees lootne ki sajis e sarkar ki hai, kar rahi hai, usi liye uske protest mein, yani लोगों के इस ग्रीवेंस को देश के सामने लाना, सदन के सामने रखना, सदन के बाहर रखना ये कोशिश हमारी है, इसीलिए आज ये प्रोटेस्ट कर रहे हैं। ओपोजिशन पार्टीज़ आल्सो क्रिएटेड अ रक्स अगेंस्ट द राइजिंग प्राइसेस इन द अपर हाउस, फॉलोइंग व्हिच इट वाज ए जर्न टिल नून ऑन वेंसडे। सर्जिंग ग्लोबल प्राइसेस India imports 85% of its crude oil, which has seen prices rise nearly 50% this year. The central bank has said it is monitoring crude and commodity prices ahead of its next monetary policy meeting in early April. But markets do not expect the Reserve Bank of India to change key rates as it looks to prioritize growth. In news from Pakistan. Ahead of the crucial no-confidence vote against Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, Opposition Alliance PDM Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman has claimed the allies of the ruling PTI government are no more supporting the Premier. Rahman's statement came after his meeting with the leadership of key government ally MQMP in Karachi. The allies of the ruling PTI, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, are no more standing with the government. Maulana Fazlur Rahman, the chief of Opposition Alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement, claimed on Tuesday after holding a meeting with leadership of PTI's key ally, MQMP, in the port city of Karachi. This comes as Pakistan's parliament is slated to convene a session on Friday over a no-confidence motion filed by opposition parties against Prime Minister Imran Khan, 
blaming of poor governance and mismanaging the economy. Rahman challenged if there was any single individual to support PM Khan and further appealed the masses to attend the opposition's anti-government long march that will begin on March 25. <laughs> While the Premier currently has a majority in Parliament with its coalition partner, the opposition claims that it has the backing of at least 20 lawmakers from the ruling party and its allies, which it says should be enough to make Khan lose the vote. Moving on, Pakistan's recent attempts towards turning Gilgit Baltistan into its fifth province have received widespread backlash. Political activists have termed the move illegal and have stated any such move without consulting the people of the illegally occupied region would be resisted by them. Raja Muhammad Amin, Deputy Secretary General of National Awami Party, has objected to Pakistan's attempts to turn Gilgit Baldistan, a disputed territory, into its fifth province. Earlier this month, a bill was submitted by lawmakers of Balochistan Awami Party, an ally of ruling PTI government in Pakistan's Senate, seeking provincial status for Gilgit Baldistan, which received a swift backlash from opposition legislators in Gilgit Baldistan and the public. Amin stated any move without consulting the people of the illegally occupied region would be resisted by them. GB को ये ये जो आप अबूरी सेटअप का एक लारा लगा रहे हो इसे बंद किया जाए क्योंकि GB रियासत का हिस्सा है इस पे भी पबंदी की बात करते हैं क्योंकि ये GB के लोगों की मंशा के खिलाफ बात की जा रही है कि उसको पाकिस्तान का अबूरी सुबह बनाने की बात करके उन्हें एक नया लारी पंप देने की बात कर रहे हैं। the activists also raised concern over hefty electricity bills amid rising inflation and government's failure to provide promised subsidies on food items to people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. He accused the common public in Pakistan's occupied territories have always been at the receiving end of its discriminatory policies. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban on Wednesday reversed a decision to allow Afghan girls to return to high schools hours after reopening them, saying it is still to decide on the uniforms they must wear. The United Nations and the United States said the move contradicts many Taliban assurances and statements. The Taliban on Wednesday backtracked on the announcement that high schools would open for girls, saying they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with Islamic law for them to reopen. Teachers and students had reportedly returned in excitement to campuses on Wednesday morning, but were ordered to go home, reports suggest. The United Nations Assistance Mission to Afghanistan in a statement said it deplores the Taliban's decision that they are further extending their ban on female students above the sixth grade to return to school. U.S. Envoy for Afghanistan Ayn Makiri said, this is very disappointing news and contradicts many Taliban's assurances and statements. The last time the Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001, they banned female education and most employment. The international community has made the education of girls a key demand for any future recognition of the Taliban administration, which took over the country in August as foreign forces withdrew. The Taliban is seeking to run the country according to its interpretation of Islamic law, while at the same time accessing billions of dollars in aid that it desperately needs to stave off widespread poverty and hunger. Sri Lanka has dropped in its military at hundreds of patrol stations to help distribute fuel amid the worst economic crisis and accompanying shortages that have forced people across the country to queue for hours. The decision came after three elderly people dropped dead while waiting in queues in sweltering heat. Sri Lanka has ordered its military to post soldiers at hundreds of petrol stations to help with distribution after a sudden rise in prices of key commodities and the accompanying shortages forced tens of thousands of people to queue for hours. The decision came after three elderly people dropped dead during their wait in long queues, officials said. Police also said a man was stabbed to death on Monday 
in an argument with the driver of a three-wheeler vehicle. The move was a response to complaints of stockpiling and inefficient distribution, government spokesperson Ramesh Pathirana said. Earlier this month, Sri Lanka also signed a 1 billion US dollars credit line with India to help ease crippling shortages of fuel, food and medicine. The Indian Ocean island nation is battling a foreign exchange crisis that has forced the devaluation of its currency and hit payments for essential imports, prompting the government to also approach the International Monetary Fund. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladesh has attained 100% electricity coverage with the inauguration of the China-funded Pyra Power Plant in Pataukali district, some 204 kilometers south of the country's capital, Dhaka. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina at the inauguration ceremony held on Monday said that it is the biggest thing that we have been able to light every house in our country. She thanked the Chinese government and all the staff from Bangladesh and China who had contributed to this project. Chinese ambassador to Bangladesh Li Jiming said at the ceremony that the project serves as another major breakthrough in China-Bangladesh cooperation under the Belt and Road Initiative. Pyra power plant, which includes two units each with a capacity of 660 megawatt, has already commenced its commercial operations. It is the first coal-fired thermal power plant in Bangladesh that adopts ultra-supercritical technology. Thousands of devotees took part in an annual chariot festival in India's southern Kaliburgi city this week to commemorate the 200th that anniversary of an 18th century saint. The religious event was held after two years due to the coronavirus pandemic. Thousands of devotees took part in the three-day-long ancient chariot festival in Kalaburgi city in India's southern Karnataka state to commemorate the 200th death anniversary of the 18th century saint Sharana Basaveswara this week. The city wore a festive look as a religious event was held in such a grand manner after two years due to COVID-19 pandemic. With cheers from emotionally charged devotees reverberating in the air as part of tradition, chariot carrying the idol of revered saint was drawn around his shrine complex where his mortal remains are enshrined. It was the two years people were not uh, able to participate in the Jatra Motsava. So this year it was like a Utsava for everyone. So lots of people have gathered together for all the days and took the blessings of Lord Shanvashwashwara. For the first time, temple authorities arranged for a helicopter to shower rose petals on the carriage. Sharana Pasaveshwara, also known as Appa by the locals, was a Lingayat saint known for the charity and Kayaka philosophy, which says one does not have the rights to demand the fruits of his labor. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India achieves 400 billion goods export target, PM Modi says it is key self-reliant India milestone. Allies no more with PM Imran Khan's party claims Pakistan's opposition alliance chief. And Taliban shut down schools for Afghan girls hours after reopening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.